Welcome to the wide world of esports, the show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today we're discussing esports job recruitment and staffing. My guest is Kim Schatzer, the managing director of Onward Play. Welcome, Kim. Hi, thank you for having me. This is so exciting. All right, so what is Onward Play? Thanks for asking. Um, I will dive right into it. So Onward Play is a division of Onward Search, which is a staffing firm that's been around since 2007. And we've been staffing in esports and gaming since 2007 and really in recent years have made a big push to esports because it's growing and the industry is doing well and booming. And there's a lot of these companies that um, you know, need hiring resources and help, whether that's designers, producers, um, you know, camera crew, production people, media people, artists, um, community managers. So we're really covering a lot of things in tech and creative and art and um, production for these esports and gaming companies. And it's an exciting space to work in. So I bet a lot of people would be curious to know about the 2000, uh, 2007, you know, because that seems to be going back quite a while. And it seems that the real, the industry growth has been more recently. Can you tell us about how you ended up starting in 2007? Right, well, Onward Search began in 2007, mainly staffing in digital marketing, traditional marketing, for a lot of um, corporations across many industries, not just gaming. So we had our hand really in every type of industry from fintech to e-commerce, um, you know, any type of ad agency, marketing agency, um, entertainment company, film. We were working all across and we were just seeing a ramp up and a big pickup in um, you know, games and toys and tabletop and casino and especially mobile and VR and AR and AAA. And um, you know, it's really just grown um, tremendously since then. And as far as esports growth, you know, we've been tracking the industry for a while. And as we saw, you know, more startups happening in esports and more, you know, exciting, you know, new technology esports companies and new vendors in the esports space trying to help with esports law or esports um, production or media rights or advertising or partnership deals or talent agencies. Like there's so many companies around the world of esports that support it. So we said we really want to sink our teeth into. Um, staffing in this space. And um, it's turned out really well in our favor because gaming and esports grew 20% since the pandemic. So we've been doing well. So do people call you a headhunter? Sure. Yeah. Headhunter, recruiter. Um, my team really, they're specialized game recruiters. So they know everything inside and out about all the tournaments, all the leagues, who's playing in what, what countries are doing, you know, what kind of conference or festival or tournament. Um, you know, they're very aware of the M&A activity that's been happening in gaming lately. And of course, all of the, you know, new game titles and what ships in what month. So really we as recruiters, not just know a little bit about esports and staff in the space, but we like eat, breathe, live, sleep, everything esports and gaming, which has helped us tremendously just with our knowledge base. When we call a client, we could truly say like, we understand what it is that your game plan engineer needs to do to create and build and ship this game. Or we understand what it's like trying to find the right branding and sponsorship person for your esports organization so you could find the right partnership and grow. So I understand that you are also a member of the Esports Trade Association. Do you think it's a, if people are looking for a job in the space, do you think it's good to be a member of a trade association like that? Absolutely. I mean, that's where you're going to make a ton of connections. I do recommend joining um, ESDA because it is really the first association in the game industry. And what they're looking to do is, you know, create best practices and be a very non- you know, partial, um, you know, education resource for a lot of people looking to get into the industry or to find more partnerships. So what led you to work in staffing and job recruitment? That's a great question. Um, it's funny, I did not grow up a gamer um, and I grew up loving theater and I went to college for theater and singing. So it's just so funny that I ended up in um, you know, game staffing. 
but really what it is is sales and being a people person. And I do pride myself on not being, you know, sales sharky. And I think in esports and gaming, you always have to tread lightly when you go into this type of client base because they're not looking to be pitched to and sold to all day long. Um, people in gaming are looking for community. They're looking for a network. And that's why the esports and gaming community is so tight knit. And it's this little community that you have to like kind of break into to let them know, hey, I'm one of you and I get what you do. And um, I understand what you're building and the greater good of everything you're making at your studio or everything you're doing with your league, trying to you know, advance your team. So um, you know, we, we really understand it on a higher level. And I think what you know, made me so passionate about this space is just seeing an industry and it's very you know, young stages morphing and budding and it, there's not just esports leagues and teams. It's, of course, all the people that service the esports industry, but there's also esports tourism. And we're seeing all the major Fortune 5000 companies try to get in the esports and gaming space in some type of way, whether that's through a, spark, a, a sponsorship or they are you know, helping build an arena in a major city and um, you know, changing um, tourism in that city. And there's just so many other ways that esports is impacting people colleges there's a whole college section of of esports so i just find it very fascinating that it's an industry that has grown so fast in such a short amount of time and has gained so much popularity that there's you know just massive investment and funding in this space um, in a vc or a startup perspective but also in the big fortune 5000s and that's what interests me it's, it's an industry that's growing and doing well it's, it's not going away anytime soon you know, it's interesting because Hawaii is a tourism economy, essentially. And, you know, I would really like to see it uh, add gaming and esports to our, our, our basic tourism economy. I did notice that Japan, even before the pandemic, had uh, there was a hotel, I think, in Tokyo, maybe it was somewhere else, where it was an esports hotel. And I think that they have those kind of properties across the country. Have you seen that? Um, yeah, there is a mix of esports with every type of industry, you name it. There's a mix of esports and food, a mix of esports and hospitality, a mixture of esports and, and cryptocurrency. I mean, we're just seeing it interject in every type of way. And I think that's because a lot of companies are saying, how do I capitalize on this growing um, you know, entertainment and form of entertainment. And of course, with the Olympics happening right now, we're hearing about, you know, can esports be a part of the future Olympics? And will it really, truly finally be recognized as a real sport? And, and you know, the age long question that people have been asking for decades about esports. Um, and it's just gaining that notoriety. And I'm not surprised people are trying to monetize esports any way they can. And I would love to stay at that hotel. It sounds fun. <laughs> so, what is the current landscape in the gaming industry in terms of? the job market? Sure. So like I said, we work with all different types of game studios. So not just esports, but, um, you know, your console PC, um, you know, studios, your indie studios, um, your massive AAA, big corporate studios, the publishers, um, you know, tabletop. And so we really see what everyone in the industry is up to. And we get to view the industry from up above where we say, all right, these are the trends. Here are the patterns. This is what all the clients seem to be wanting this month or this quarter, or we're noticing, you know, since the pandemic, there's many new studios starting brand new IPs. And this is the trend of like what they're looking to do. And of course, in esports, the trends we've been seeing in the landscape have a lot been around e-commerce. Um, esports, you think it's about leagues and playing? No, no, no. It's about making money through fashion and lifestyle brand and the content and the YouTube and the TikTok. And it's all about creating like a vibe and um, esport companies and game studios are, are trying to um, you know, really lean into building those types of branding and marketing teams, but also the you know, sales teams where they can maybe um, put their game on a toy or put their game as an NFT um, or you know, put their um, players on a t-shirt and, and try to monetize off of that. So, we're seeing a lot of um, trends happening in that direction, which is exciting. Um, but typically what's popular right now are producers. I think a lot of esports companies are just trying to find folks that can do the overall creative vision and say, here's the vision for our YouTube page and where we should take our content, or this is how we can highlight our sponsors or how we can highlight our players and talk about DNI at the same time, or you know, X, Y, and Z initiative. And 
um, it's an exciting landscape um, to, to see because I, I'm watching it all unfold in front of my eyes as we try to push towards post-pandemic world right now. Uh, of course, Delta is squashing some of those dreams. I have a lot of um, esports clients and game studios that can't go back in office and fall like they thought they were going to, which is unfortunate. But um, you know, really what's popular right now is producers and directors and, and people that can kind of come in and run the show because you know, esports had to make a big adjustment when the world went remote as far as how they run the back end of their, their teams and their businesses. And um, it's hard to find that senior level talent that knows what they're doing and kind of run a team remotely and still you know, be profitable and push growth. Sure. And you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the Olympics in relation to esports because I was actually watching videos yesterday about whether esports will be an Olympic sport. And what's interesting about the Olympics, and I'm sure many people are watching it right now, is that the Olympics is really a sponsorship event and a security event. And so the the focus on sponsorship and security is as big as it is on the athletes in the competition. Uh, you know, so I, so I think that's kind of interesting. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, that's a good note. I would say, you know, a lot of esports players right now I'm seeing are getting compared to a lot of, you know, sports players. And even like you said, in, you know, for compensation or how their contracts work with these leagues and how long they play or how long they're on a team or, you know, what they're obligated to do. There's a lot of differences between esports and regular sports, and that's the one adjustment. If um, they really did go to the Olympics, that I could see, um, you know, being a discrepancy. Um, at our last um, esports trade association call, somebody was mentioning how, uh, you, you know, these esports players can make, you know, triple or quadruple more than the Wimbledon players will win. Whereas in Wimbledon, you're working, you know, sometimes 25, 30 years in your career towards it. And someone in esports can pick up the sport in high school and then play in college and then go off to go pro and, um, you know, find a lot of profitability for themselves on that, on that team and do well. So I, I think the industry is, is definitely different than traditional sports, but I would love to see it continue to push towards something like an Olympics. That'd be an exciting day. And I know it's in our future. Sure. And so what is innovative and unique about Onward Play's staffing services? Of course, that's a great question because there's literally tens of thousands of other staffing firms out there. I think what we do different in esports and gaming is that we really push diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we always have since 2007, that's been part of our vision and mission. So what that means is when I have an esports company that comes to me and says, hey, we have a DNI problem, we're only 7% diverse on our team or 15% or diverse, and we wanna bring that number to 20 or 25 or 30, how do you help us? Um, you know, what we can do is help with that DEI targeted strategic sourcing. So we have a database of hundreds of thousands of game and tech candidates and um, many esports candidates. And so we really have a full scope on who's working, who's passive, who's secretly looking for their next job in esports or gaming, who's under the table, you know, hunting for their next role. And we're able to say, you know, let's be strategic about who we bring to you. Um, of course, without being discriminatory to any, you know, underrepresented group or anyone at all, but these esports companies have a long way to go. I mean, almost all of them have very little women leadership, very little women in the tech roles, but maybe more women um, doing like the e-commerce side of the esports league or doing the marketing team instead of um, maybe some other positions like production or, um, you know, camera or editing. So our goal is to bring them as many diverse candidates as we can. And we do that by um, partnering with Recruitix, which is a recruitment marketing firm, and they have a program called Diversity Reach. So we're able to go through them and our esports clients and our game studio clients, their job orders get pushed off to not only all of our networks of gaming and esports people, but also Indeed, LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, and then over 80 historical black college and university alumni boards, as well as um, you know, community and diversity um, job boards and community boards for underrepresented communities for disabled or AAPI or black or um, veterans. So it, we're casting the widest net we can to help these esports companies bring in some different you know, backgrounds and voices and faces and, and try to change the industry um, in, in a way that we can. Um, so that's really you know, near and dear to our hearts because 
you know, we're a female led division. I'm, I'm, I'm leading us and I, I got to make sure we get, um, you know, more diversity in these companies that so desperately need it to survive. Sure. And so how do you recruit uh, tech creatives, leaders and artists in the game? industry? Sure. So a lot of it right now is, is passive candidates. Um, like right now we're working with one of the major esports leagues and, you know, they're looking for, um, you know, certain team members to bring on and we really have to go in there and headhunt and, and go after people and say, you know, this is what this new opportunity could be and how the benefits level up to what you're making now and what you're doing now. But also here's your career trajectory. Here's your opportunity that this new company can bring to you. This is what their league is doing or what their next IP is that they're you know, building and how you could be a part of that. Um, I think a lot of people when they are in esports or gaming roles, they can get creatively starved. So sometimes just telling them about the opportunity creatively is enticing. Um, but right now we are seeing esports and game studios paying above market rate for producers, directors, technical people, engineers, editors, uh, motion graphics, VFX, you know, you name it. They're paying a little bit more right now because there is a talent shortage in the industry. So when we go to candidates, we're very aware that we're the fifth recruiter of the day writing you, but here's what um, our client can offer you that's different than what you're doing right now. So how do game studios partner? Sure. So how, you know, game studios or esports companies partner with us, it's either we find them or they find us, or, you know, a lot of our business is through word of mouth. So we have happy customers that tell their friends about us and, and then we work with them. Um, and typically they come to us with a problem that we want to solve. So we want to go in, not just as a sourcing company to send you resumes, but we're here to really find matches. So I'm not going to, you know, my team's not going to go into a new client and throw them 15 resumes, throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Like we're going to find you the exact two or three people that are a true match for everything in that job description. And that could add value to your team instead of just be a culture fit. It's someone that's going to be a culture add. And, and so that's what we look to do with these clients. But a lot of the times they come to us and say, you know, help us with our DNI sourcing strategies. Our recruiters are having a tough time right now, or help us fill this temp position or this full-time permanent position. And then we dive in and we start the search and set up some interviews and, and hopefully that candidate gets an offer. So how would you distinguish yourself from something like LinkedIn and their, um, you know, their essentially uh, their job, uh, um, kind of roles in terms of uh, uh, being a kind of online free okay. connecting people. Sure. So there's a lot of the LinkedIn's out there, but specifically to gaming and esports, there's over 20 game specific job boards. And what's hilarious is a lot of the clients that I go in and start working with, they're like, yeah, we're spending 15 or 20 grand a year posting our jobs in this job board and it's getting us nobody. And the candidates are like very, um, you know, uh, inexperienced and completely not a fit for the roles. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of pain points of um, game studios and esports companies by posting on those boards. And how we're different is, you know, we have these personalized connections with these candidates and we build rapport with them and have long phone calls and know exactly their heart's desires of their dream companies and where they want to go and, you know, what rate they're willing to take and, you know, where they're willing to move to where they don't want to move to. And we know like all the inner workings of, um, that candidate and what, where they're looking to go in their career. Whereas on a job board, you know, a lot of the people on there are just throwing resumes, um, you know, into jobs they might not be a fit for, hoping that they get an interview. And we really match the talent for exactly their um, skill sets to what the client is looking for. And um, our database definitely helps us with that. But it, that was through, you know, thousands of hours and years and years of hard work from recruiters, finding all these talented people getting them in our database and in our network and then tracking them throughout their careers and helping them make their next moves and jump ship and all of that. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot of people watching this who are looking either to change jobs within gaming or move into gaming or esports, or they're, you know, they've never really had a job in the industry, but they have a lot of talent. They might wonder, like, how do you get paid? Because they don't know if you, they might have to pay you or like how that works. Oh, of course. With a staffing agency, you don't pay us. We don't take anything from the candidate. The client um, for a contract or freelance role, we're charging them a markup on top of the candidate's hourly rate. And then if it's a permanent direct hire position, we charge the client a placement fee 
for finding that candidate. Um, so it's really free of charge for um, candidates. And often we have candidates that write us and say, you know, I'm only junior level, I'm only entry level or internship level. And I know you probably don't have roles open for me, but can you help me with my resume or can you give me advice on what I can do? And um, I do spend a lot of time in my week kind of counseling people trying to get in the industry and get their foot in the door. And my biggest word of advice that's going to be different than what you're hearing elsewhere is like, you have to know everything about everything about everything about that industry or, you know, the games that, that studio builds. So if that studio that you're applying to, or maybe you're targeting 10 studios that you want to get an internship with or a junior level role with, if they are Unreal Studios, um, studios you need to take Unreal Engine courses. You need to learn about how the games are built, how they, you interact with the engine to make the game happen. Um, like you have to become an expert on all things back end of a, of a game studio. And um, it's different in the tech world, you know, where maybe it's just the developers at a company that have to know the programs and the languages. That's not the case in gaming. Like you have to, like even producers or directors or, you know, C-level executives have to know how to interact with Unreal to build a successful game. Um, even the marketing people. So it's important that you really learn about how games are built. And then on the esports side, I would say a background in any type of production or YouTube or content um, or social is definitely going to help in esports as well as the branding, communications, and marketing side, because there are so many esports companies right now where a large part of their revenue model is the merchandising side. And that's an easier way to get into the industry rather than trying to get in by being a player or you know, by being the cinematographer, right? Like only you know, every game studio only needs so many cinematographers and videographers to, um, you know, help their leagues out. So you want to go in with like a real life skill set, um, like something like a marketing or a social that would definitely help. So do you only recruit for the United States or is if someone from another country wants to come here and work, um, do you work with them? Sure. Most of our clients don't offer any work authorization or sponsorship. We do a lot of work in Canada, though. There is a great esports community up there. Um, and then, of course, the US um, coast to coast we cover. Um, unfortunately, I have no clients yet in Hawaii, but that's going to be <laughs> one of my goals by the end of this year. I got to um, check out the Hawaii business uh, landscape. Sure. Well, we, you know, we certainly want to, you know, uh, create more of a esports or gaming industry, but I'm not, I think it might be a little bit slow. So, um, what type of, like, specifically if someone is looking for a job in esports, Kim, what particular job are you staffing for? Sure. Right now in esports, we have a lot of um, project manager, production, video editors, um, brand partnerships, um, business development manager, salespeople. It's really hard to uh, for a normal salesperson to try to go to an esports company and make it, it's a different swagger. It's a different style in esports and gaming than you, you know your average sales. Um, so that's the position that we've seen openings for. We've also been staffing some diversity and inclusion roles since that's a very popular topic in gaming these days. There's a lot of companies hiring people success or employee success or diversity inclusion or more HR help to make sure they're well rounded in that sense going forward as they build. Um, and you know we're also seeing a fair share of like marketing people and social media people. Um, we even do a couple C level searches for some esports um, companies that are growing really fast. So um, if anyone's in creative, marketing, production, tech, video, um, you know VR, gaming, um, that's really what we cover. All right. And so, how can someone transition from a job in tech to a job in gaming? Yeah, that's a really good question. I get this one all the time, actually, of like, hey, I'm a graphic designer. How would I become a game designer? Or, you know, hi, I'm, you know, doing some, you know, video work. How would I transition that in from entertainment into esports? It's really about um, finding a mentor in the space. So do some LinkedIn searching, see who has a comparable job to you, but in an esports or gaming company, write them and say, I'd love to, you know, buy you coffee or, you know, give you a gift card for your time, but I'd love to pick your brain on how you got started. Um, that like mentoring and putting yourself forward is really important. And it's tough in gaming because people tend to be a little introverted. Um, but, you know, I definitely recommend reaching out in that way. 
But as far as, you know, jumping in and trying to find a role, I do recommend for people to study it any way they can. There's a lot of great um, certification courses and, um, you know, degrees out there and courses online that are even free that will tell you a lot about the industry. It will help you get in um, just so you can go into those interviews prepared and you know what you're talking about. But, you know, graphic designers, for example, if they just learn Unity or Unreal, and if they start doing like faux mock-up projects on their portfolios of some game work and saying, all right, well, let me just lay out, you know, the UX of how I would design this level of this game or these characters for this game versus what I did on the web before for an ad agency, you could start building something of a portfolio. So you could show I'm versatile. I can do web, I could do software. And, you know, I have no experience in, in gaming, but you know, here's my portfolio of things I've done on the side. And it's all about showing like how you went above and beyond and um, built your portfolio. And that would be a good way to transition is, is just start a lot of side hustle, join, you know, game jams, go to IGDA, join all the associations that you can, join ESDA for esports and really get involved, put that all on your resume because it shows the client that like, I'm in the mix. I'm, I'm in this gaming community. I'm trying hard to, you know, make a stance here. And I'm part of all the meetup groups and the Facebook and LinkedIn and, and all those fun discord groups. And um, yeah. So what are VR um, and esports and gaming managers looking for when they look at a resume? Sure. I mean, they're looking for a resume that tells a story. So if you're all over the place and you have a side hustle business and you like photography and you like, you know, have all these things going on, sometimes that's not as, as attractive in the esports and gaming world. It might work for business or corporate because it shows you're well-rounded, but in gaming esports, they want to see that you are an expert in your space because there's so many people trying to get in to the business um, that they want to see that you really have the skill set and what it takes to do the job. Um, so they want to see that your resume tells a story. So if it's confusing and there's different random things all over the place um, and you wear too many hats, it's almost like you're a jack of all trades and, and not a master at any. Um, and so, you know, definitely having a focus in your, in your line of work, but also like, you know, showing the managers that you know what it is that you want to do and you love what it is that you do um, because you go above and beyond like that kind of stuff, showing it on a resume. I'm in the clubs, I'm in the associations, I go to the game jams. It really shows that you, um, you know, encapsulate your world around that industry and you'll be able to add value for them. Sure. And, you know, so uh, what has the pandemic, what is the impact of the pandemic had on the industry for you? Sure. I mean, we saw a big growth in, in March of 2020 when the pandemic hit. Um, we had a lot of clients coming to us saying, you know, we have a lot of uh, roles opening as people are staying home playing games. So um, it's just been very exciting to, you know, fill these roles quite fast with these studios growing faster than ever before. And these esports leagues are really booming and building their presence during the pandemic. So we've been busy hiring and staffing all their creative and tech people. So if someone wants to reach out to you, how do they contact you? Sure. So you can visit us at um, www.onwardplay.com. We're also on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram and all those fun places. You can find us on Discord as well. And um, our recruiters are really everywhere. So um, it's hard not to run into one of us. But um, our email is info at um, onwardplay.com if you want to send us your resume or if you're a studio and you need some help hiring. All right. Well, thank you, Kim. It was great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you, listeners. Uh, it's really awesome to be on this podcast. I do listen to you. So this is exciting. And um, thanks for having me. All right. So thank you viewers for joining us today. Make sure to tune in next week. My guest will be Ulysses Carcamo Bonnet, head of marketing and strategy at Shaky Corp. See you then.